Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions that anybody has. I'll start with uh, our esteemed folks uh, at the front. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I have a question for you. If I did the math right, okay, what is the dollar amount that would be saved yearly if the new facility is approved by the voters? Your question is, what is the amount that would be saved yearly if we built a new facility? Yes. Okay. Uh, about ninety thousand dollars. That's what I thought. Okay, I got it. I mean, because it sounds like this is just a huge drain. We could do a lot better with this facility. I mean, uh, there's a joke anytime you talk about pools and recreation, it is a drain. But so is every other service, as much as we value all of them. Uh, we are paying a lot for what we get in this community with our current facilities. Absolutely. And we could do better. I think we deserve, the residents deserve for us to do better. Um, there's a lot of years ago on certain groups like Next Door uh, about rumors of bogus things that they just put down there. Is this the best uh, resource that we can send them to to get the facts? That, that, that would be my yes. 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 Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the, 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 essentially, there is misinformation that might work its way out into the public from a variety of mediums by folks that may not um, be fans or trust our information or have their own facts. Is this the best place, nprfacilities.org, to get the facts? The quite simply the answer is yes. <coughs> They 
are not interested in having all of Merriam welcome at their facilities. Unless we want to use their facilities from like 9 a.m. to 11 and then from like 1 to 4. All of the prime time that they have is full. They have, uh, they, they built a facility next to them, uh, I think it's like an apartment or senior living, that part of that is that all of the people in that facility get a recreation pass to sit up. So they, I've had, I've have had conversations with their city administrator. They, they're okay with who we're sending there now, but they don't want us to send anybody more. We've had conversations with the library, we've had conversations with the county about opportunities. Could we partner? Are there synergies that we could build? We're talking about a community center. We're, you know, we, we're not talking about a recreation center, although we talk about recreational amenities. You know, recreation, this isn't about muscles. This is about community. This isn't about, brick and mortar, this is about community. Community is not brick and mortar, that's what a city is. A city is hardscape, it's brick, it's mortar, it's streets, it's asphalt. We're talking about community. Community is relationships, it's values, it's ideals. We're talking about a place that people can come together like this. We're talking about areas in a building that are free for people to sit down and congregate, play cards. We're talking about areas where we can drop off children and hopefully partner with the library and have the library offer programs that they offer at their library, but in a shared facility, read to the kids while mom goes and gets on the treadmill and grandma goes and learns how to do email or plays Wii Bowl. That's a community center. Amenities in a community, all in one building. So yes, we've had those conversations with those people. We will continue to have those conversations. We've not ruled any of them out. This thing away from it for a second. Um, to, to that point, uh, I don't know how many of you spent any time going to uh, the Powell Center in the evenings, any evening, I don't care which evening it is, we to tonight, to Sunday night. Uh, I've had two or three occasions to go to the New Olathe Community Center uh, for meetings, mayor meetings. We usually uh, meet on Wednesday nights or Thursday nights in the evening. Um, you could not have this meeting in those facilities, in any of those facilities, because there's no room. Their facilities are in use all the time. But they're not just in use for people playing basketball. There, there are a lot of kids groups in there. There are a lot of families there. Uh, there are activities. There's meetings going on. They're busy, busy, busy places. And I, I would ask you to walk up and down. And I'm, not, I'm not picking on uh, this facility, but walk up and down this facility right now and see how much business it gets. And then drive over to Mission and make the comparison. Now, if we build a facility that is closer to what they're doing, I guarantee you we will see similar activities here. People will want to come here. Uh, we all talk about, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a grandparent now, but when I, when I was a parent, you know, I was, I was struggling with trying to keep my kid active, give them something to do, things you can do as a family. That's what we're trying to provide here, is a place for families to go and recreate, places for them to meet, uh, we have a facility here now, it's falling apart, but it doesn't even meet the needs, even if it wasn't, because of the way it's designed. Uh, so, uh, I don't think that if any of us wanted to go to Mission, we would go there. You know, I've, I've got a lot of neighbors that go over there and exercise, but they won't go at certain times of day because they're too busy. Uh, so I don't think adding, uh, adding that as an option is something that's that way. I just want to make that.
kind of had kind of brainstorm, but really that's a I mean, there's a lot of a lot of road that we need to travel to have those conversations. I would envision that if the community wants a new community center and it's not here, that we will have plenty of time to determine what comes next. However, based on surveys um, that we sent out, we asked what should happen here, and pretty much the the direction that we felt is that people don't want it to be a car lot, they don't want it to be a church, they want it to be still a city amenity. So I would argue that with our farmers market across the street, there is some synergy to be had here, and we also don't want to abandon downtown. So uh, I don't think that, and I can't speak for the council, but I don't think that any of that would be in the cards. I think we would continue to have a presence on this site in some form. If we built a new community center, it just wouldn't, it, it, this would not remain a community center. We would find some other way to use this site as a community asset. But I, I don't know. Use the site, but not the building. I'm sorry? Use the site. Not the I don't know what we would use the building for. We know what it costs to operate the building, but now I, I just think that if we were going to build something new, we would need to decide what makes better use of this site. But those are conversations that, that are still to be had, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, one of the issues that we have with this, and I didn't really go into, but the reason that these books are so thick and the problem that we have and why things are so expensive here is we're in a floodplain. We're in a floodplain, and we have a building that is not code compliant. Anybody that's worked with our great code folks, and everybody loves the code folks in Marion, uh, or anybody that's in a floodplain, or driven up down Marion Drive and looked around and said, well, how come people don't do some different things in downtown Marion? It's going to run a floodplain. You can't do anything. If you do anything, you have to elevate out of the floodplain, which is very, very, very expensive. We're grandfathered in on a lot of codes in here. However, if we make an improvement, we have to start to bring things up to code, which creates a, a daisy chain of events. It's not as simple as saying, hey, let's do, let's just move, let's, let's tear some walls down. Well, if we do that, then we have to bring things up to modern standards, which means we're going to have to sprinkle. Well, that's a very, very expensive proposition. It means we might have to, life safety issues. There are just codes that we are not adhering to in this building. Because we haven't had to. We're not the only building in town. We haven't exempted ourselves out of it. But it, it, we can't enforce these rules on other folks if we don't follow through on them ourselves. So the issue simply with this building is that, uh, and anything that's in the floodplain, is it's very, very expensive. Because anything we do now, we have to elevate out of the floodplain. You know, there's 12 or 16 sump pumps around this building right now. If we get the rain that we think it's going to rain tonight, there'll be water in the basement tomorrow because one of them's going to fail without fail. Uh, Second half of your question. The aquatic center. The aquatic center. The, are, are we talking about the one out in Lenexa? I, to be honest with you, I we have not really put that into any calculations that we've made just because it's 20 minutes away. We, we uh, in turn, so if your question was about could we, could, could the could we support one in light of the fact that there, there's one going out there? Was that your and question? And the fact that, that Shawnee Mission is talking about partnering with Johnson County Park and Recs. Sure. And doing swimming lessons for all the elementary children. Sure. Yeah, I, I will tell and you that. that taken into, into account. Johnson County is, is in the process of divesting themselves from the Roland Park Pool um, because the Roland Park Pool is not. Um, as revenue neutral as they would like, um, that perhaps creates an opportunity for us for the new facility. I can't speak for the county, I can't speak for the council, or, and that has not been part of the, the, uh, the conversation thus far. But I would argue that we're, I don't think that we're in competition with any of them. This is a community amenity. Really, who we would be going for, to be quite honest with you, are the people that are in Eastern Shawnee, because Eastern Shawnee is never going to get a community center. Northern Oakland Park is never going to get a community center. Um, those are the people that we're hoping to draw to our facility because it's new and it has amenities that we know everybody likes. And they will actually, just like sales tax, they'll pay more because they'll pay non resident rates. So, so I, we view this as we're actually trying to draw people into this more than our residents as opposed to competing with somebody that's. Did that answer your question? Kind of Thank you. And my question was the same about the indoor aquatic center. Sure. Is that the 
Yeah, it, the indoor aquatic center, that is on almost every survey that's sent out to anybody in any community. Indoor water is by far usually the number one thing on every survey. People want year-round water. They want it a little bit warmer. It has therapy, it, not just for kids to play in, but it has therapeutic uses. You can offer senior classes in it. I mean, you can program that water uh, in a lot of ways year-round that you can't in outdoor water. Um, pools don't make their money back. It's literally money down the drain. But it draws people into your community. And so the point of having indoor water is that it's the number one thing people want. If you don't give people what they want, they probably aren't going to come to your facility. And then the numbers work even less. And it doesn't make, it really doesn't make sense, depending on what your opinion is today, <laughs> to do any of this. Look at the five acres over there, on the land that's here. On this side? Yeah. There's a little over three acres here. <laughs> a little over three acres on this side right here. Well, that's going to depend on what we hear as we roll this out to the public. I mean, we've got, we, we, even though we've been engrossed in this for a long time, we really just had a formal recommendation from the Senate Committee in January. So we're really just now putting together the information to roll out to the public to find out, <coughs> did we get it right? Did, did, did people, did, uh, can we push back the gag reflex on this and actually think that this is something that we should send out to the voters? Um, so I don't have a good answer for that. I can tell you that we're going to take this information. We have a campaign to take this out to people. You're going to see us on Saturdays in front of Hen House. We're going to be at Turkey Creek Festival. We're going to go to where people are at, and we're going to say, what do you think? Tell us what you think. I don't think anybody wants to, if, if there's only a handful, if, if the surveys are wrong, if what we're hearing from the people that are engaged is wrong, why, why waste the time or the effort? We think that we think that more. We think that people want this. We think there's enough people that would support this. But we need to make sure one that we answer questions that people have, because we don't know all the questions. I do not profess to have all the answers to all those questions. But we need to, you know, um, the little story. Uh, Abraham Lincoln. My staff hates when I do this, but Abraham Lincoln was asked uh, if he was going to chop down a redwood tree, and he only had six hours to chop it down. How would he do it? And he said, I spent four hours sharpening my blade. <laughs> That's what we're doing right now. We're trying to make sure that the message that we're conveying and the information that we're getting from the folks that are, that are spending their time to actually hear our message fits, that it meshes, that it makes sense. We've been in the middle of it. Our hope is, is that uh, fresh eyes that look at this data that we look at all the time goes, okay, this makes sense. Or, hey, it makes sense, and I'm still going to vote no, but at least it makes sense, which is our ultimate goal, is that we all have the facts. Vote no on it, but vote no on it for the facts. Vote yes on it for the facts. We're still in the process of making sure we give all those good facts. So I hate to be evasive. We just don't have a really good answer for you. Going back to the airship, let's build a uh, Let's say that we The question is, have we had conversations with other folks that have reused old school buildings because you're, you are in the camp of, hey, we need to have an explanation for public, what comes next to you? Sure. Uh, we have not had conversations with anybody about what would happen here simply because we don't believe that any, we know what it costs to operate this. <laughs> so, so to, so to kind of go and give a, hey, it's a great building for one day. Well, that's the kind of information we need to know so we can make sure that we, we put together some sort of uh, idea that we can roll out there that make people uh, understand what we might be able to do here. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it'll just be a vision of what might occur here because it, Unless we decided to roll it all up into one and say, hey, we're going to do new community center and X here, we just, we, we have not, we, we've contemplated, but we have not grouped those two things together, nor have we talked to anybody about who would be, 
who we would want to move in here because I, I think that we want to keep this property as an asset downtown. I think we still want to bring people here, even if it's just a field and a destination playground. Um, you know, we've had conversations about an amphitheater. It, it doesn't take much maintenance. Just put a little amphitheater down here and do your Friday party in the park and put food trucks across the street. You know, I mean, there are things that we could do that would be low maintenance. You'd really just be cutting grass, but you could still have a congregating area. You could bring Turkey Creek Festival back to Turkey Creek. There are things that we've had conversations about, but all of them are just... But that's not preservation. It is not preservation. You are correct. I, I, I would... Are you talking historic society? Uh, not other than as part of the Susan Richards Johnson conversation. The problem with the original building is that the original building has been added on to and torn apart, quite honestly, to, to an extent that really the value of it is, is, is not quite what you would hope it would be. Perhaps. Absolutely. Non-resident typically pays 50% more than a resident. 
So if, if you pay $110, they can make 50% more than that $110, all right? And we, we did purposely keep resident fees the same, non-resident fees would be, we don't operate on that percentage currently today. So non-residents will see a significant increase in Okay. Can I in your answer and her question? It ties in with your subsidy decrease. What she just answered makes my question even more curious. Your revenue going from 250000 to a million five hundred thousand. You must have come to You're not saying you're going to be counting on a lot of non-resident money, apparently. And did you factor in, he talked about missions, and if you, you realize Oakland Park is one of your biggest you're considered a resident in Overland Park. Do you not? If you've got a 6624 zip code, you pay the same fee as anybody else in Overland Park. I would think they're your big competitors. Sure. Like the door swimming and that sort of thing. So I'm just curious how you crunch the numbers to get from 250000 to a million five based on how you just answered her question. Maybe it's more interesting. And the other thing that goes into the performa are the programs that we offer. So it's not just membership. Yeah, I realize that. All right. That's a big, big. But right here, our sure. our revenue here, we don't have the programs. We don't mm -hmm. operate this building at 80% capacity. That, that building was programmed at 80% capacity. So 80% of the time, the rooms would be generating some sort of revenue, whether it's a program or a class or a rental. on top of memberships. And in addition to that, here, our membership, I will be honest here, we, our membership numbers here are going to significantly change there because here we don't get a lot of families because families can't come and utilize this facility. So when we looked at the survey numbers and the number of people that were coming or said they would participate, you'll see a difference of the number of people that come and utilize the facility versus those that say they would utilize the facility if we met their needs, because we're not meeting their needs today. So that's, that, that's where you have to look at the survey data and put those numbers into the form. How many people use the facility? Last year, or on a daily basis, or annually? Annually, last year, this facility served between our programs and um, memberships, we had about 66,000 people, 66,000 visits to programs and memberships. So whether you came in for um, basketball, I, I can't tell you that because we don't track this building based on residency right now because if you sign up for a program, you sign up, we don't separate resident and non-resident rate on programs. That would be something that would change in the future. Is there like a breakdown of the revenue on your ethics? Absolutely. There's a whole pro forma on there. Absolutely. How many people we need to hire, what hours we got to be operating, what we would need to pay those people, what we would charge for these types of programming, birthdays, how many birthdays or how many weekends. I mean, all of the things that occur in any community center, all of those things are in there. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a exhausting study of what could be in a facility, what would be in a facility of this size that could be designed with this type of square footage. Mr. Engel, I have a question and a comment. I'm Tammy Pittman Stolman. My family has been here for a long time. I chose to continue to live in this city. My family owned Pittman Moving down the street. Historical landmark. We were very adamant when we sold the building, but we put it on the historical register. So nothing like this would happen. It's very important that we also let our younger folks know, not only is it important to have recreation in Marion, but also to know the history of this town. Sure. We don't want to be Overland Park. We don't want to be Leewood. We don't want to be Lanaxa. I chose to be here because I'm, I'm comfortable in this city the way that it is. I also feel that the city oversteps its bounds sometimes. 
I've been here long enough to know it. As a business owner, when my dad passed away, I've seen it firsthand. What's happened with the jewel boxes up on BMW and how BMW acquired those buildings up there. All of these things make me think, I want people to know the truth. I want the city to be truthful. And I think the city deserve, people deserve a vote, period. Agreed. And that is why we're here. We want to vote. Whether it's yes or no, I don't care. As long as we get to say what happens. I, whole, whole and I, I get very emotional because I grew up here. 52 years here. 40 of them were down there, down the street, playing in Turkey Creek, playing on that little <coughs> bridge that went across, you know, Marion Creek where the streetcar used to turn. There's a lot of history. Mr. Agreed. Campbell's signature is in that building over there in the windowsill, chalkboard. There's a lot of history here. When Miss French decided that you guys wanted to acquire this building, she was adamant that she'd like to have our building as well. We weren't ready to give it up at the time. You acquired this building because of the history, because of, of what she wanted. Whatever you decide to do, you guys, everybody needs to think about our history here and not just a new aquatic center and a new, I understand it's maintenance, but some of those maintenance problems that now we're coming back and saying, you know, it's costing this, letting this, doing that. Well, lead retention ponds weren't big enough when we built that up there. I was witness to that. Um, and this building here can be refurbished with some of the money that we use for whimsical items in the city that we've already done. A visitor center, I'd be curious to, to know how many people visit the visitor center and how much money that costs us. I'd be curious to know well, I do know what the wind chime costs. All of those are wonderful things, but some of that money that we utilize in, in those, those types of things, why didn't we think of that previously when we need maintenance on different other things? So, my, my personal opinion. I appreciate your comments. I, I uh, will assure you that everyone will be there. But that's what, I think that's what most of us are here to do. Yeah, if everyone will everyone will get the opportunity to vote. Be uh, in order to issue bonds, in order to increase the sales tax, to to do any of these things, we have to have a vote. So we will make sure that ultimately residents that. of this community get get their say. I mean, that that will be that's a fundamental portion of how we will decide what the what the right answer is to move forward. Absolutely. Everybody should make sure that they're a registered voter. That's the, make sure that Absolutely. They're, make sure that they're registered so that their voice will be heard. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, That's a wonderful point. On the other hand, I'm actually delighted that you're trying to do this. I've lived here about 15 years now, but I grew up in Johnson County. And I, I had childhood friends over here, so I went to the Marion Pool when I was just a kid. And the first year of Johnson County, uh, County Community College was in the basement here. I went to school. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, I'm pretty familiar with it. Uh, I haven't always felt appreciated as a Marion resident since I lived here in different ways. Uh, you know, uh, nine months after I moved here, uh, my car got stolen on my driveway. I, I did get it back. Uh, there's a house right next door to me that's been vacant over 40 years. The city doesn't seem to care about that, but they come by to complain about where my trash can is. <laughs> Uh, just different things, and uh, my late husband had a lot of joint issues, and he needed to go to a warm pool, at, such as Sylvester Powell. So we've either been members of Sylvester Powell for years, and just me now. We're also members of Matt Ross, just you know, to get the therapy we needed in the pools. And I just, ever since we moved here, I thought, why doesn't Red, why doesn't Miriam? stop caring so much about the big business like bringing Ikea here, all the stuff they do to uh, create and 
incentives for big business to come. Why doesn't Marion care about the residents more? You know, uh, I did appreciate the new street in front of my house, but other than that, this is the, the first big thing that I've seen residents. Uh, Marion reach out to residents and offer to do something really wonderful for them. So when I go over to Sylvester Powell three times a week and I need to go to a grocery store or a drug store, I don't come back here to do it. I spend my money over there. The same when I go to Matt Ross. You know, I can go to Price Shop. You know, I, can, I can go someplace else. I don't need to run by the, the stores in Marion if I'm visiting these other facilities. So I think uh, having a nice facility like this here that I know people can use is going to just keep more of uh, the spending money here in Marion. We appreciate those comments. Could you share your address so I can set up and write your address down table of that house next door to yours? Yeah, I'll, I'll give it to you when we're done. I'm a business owner. I've been here for 25 years and uh, just like to build up on the mayor's comments of the, for the future. Uh, if uh, uh, Mary passes the, the sales tax to get the new community center, uh, just to have a comment uh, uh, that uh, I think it would be really wonderful to build uh, a small theater or a hall inside it because uh, what makes uh, collective meeting in societies, the arts, and building up again on uh, Mayor's comments of experiences. If you have family experiences, and the more powerful those experiences are over time, that's what's called a legacy. And if Miriam has an opportunity to spend $20, $25 million, uh, it should consider putting a legacy as well uh, along with that uh, uh, community center. It's not going to be that much, uh, but you have dozens of performances all around town, everywhere. Uh, uh, most of the time it's in churches, and I think if they're brought to Miriam, it's going to work well with the pull, pull factor. You're going to have already people coming here, you're going to have a big bureau. Everything really is in mind to have a lot of uh, community events and really over time build a legacy. And I think uh, it's just something to consider if the, uh, if the voters uh, approve the community. Great. Thank you for your comments. I just wanted to comment that I take a class here three times a week, and I have a disabled person in a wheelchair, and she goes through a lot trying to get into the class from the parking lot and into this gym and into the bathrooms, and um, the staff has been very accommodating with her, but it's really kind of embarrassing because we know it's not ADA approved. It is not, it's not ADA accessible. Our pool is ADA accessible. The problem is, is that, once again, you try to address that issue, there's this cascading effect of other codes issues that we have to you know, apply to um, Not to say that we won't address those things if the solution is to stay in this building, but they're just, they're, they're not easy and they're not being expensive. Appreciate those comments. Uh, yeah, just, I don't know how to put it into a question, other than I couldn't make a statement here, but uh, when you do put it up for a vote, really want to make it simple, like a yes or no. You can't really have a three-way vote that, that would ever pass in Jones County with, you know, what option do you want to do the facility, renovate, or nothing. Uh, so I imagine you're going to have to go through a process to hopefully I'll only see one question on the ballot, not, you know, can't see the jury. Sometimes there's three different questions. And they vote, and it, it never does turn out well. Um, now, I just want to vote. I have my opinions. I love hearing the love for our history mm -hmm. and community. Uh, but I also believe this isn't a plus play. I do not like the renovate. Some people will. That's fine. Uh, but as an example, I have friends that live in Florida. Very nice homes. They're on the shoreline. And they're in one place. And people get upset when their taxes have to pay every 10 years. Their houses get flooded. The insurance rates all go up and affects them all. Um, and it's just my opinion. I find if you want to do some kind of preservation, historical preservation, uh, but I do not like the idea of my taxpayers paying for the facility. 
Thank you. The, the, uh, I will tell you that if, if this, we determine that this is uh, worthy of being a ballot initiative, we will make the ballot as simple as possible so that there is no confusion of what a yes vote or a no vote means. A yes vote means this. That's no means. Yes, sir. Um, I agree with uh, Mr. Bogan. We should dispel rumors. And we should deal with facts. And I just want to make sure that I understand some of the facts correctly. And this is the place to do it. Absolutely. So the cost of this, we're talking, could run $30 million. To, uh, in order to do that, we'll, we'll have to take about $5 million out of our reserves, which got there from the taxpayers. In order, in order to, because we're only going to borrow 25 now. So, so there's five. So that, I understand that. Now, I, in, from an earlier presentation, I thought that the cost to operate this facility would be $442,000 more than the revenues that came in. So, well, so now we're talking 635000 if I understand correctly, uh, that, uh, Revenue will come in, we'll have expenses for the new community center, and, the, and we'll have to take $635,000 a year out of the taxpayers' uh, revenue, out of the savings. Then I am hearing, and if I'm wrong in any of these places, I want to know because I want, I want to go with facts. Then I understand that the current thinking, at least in talking to my council member, Bob Payton, is that the current thinking is to go with a 10-year plan. Now, if we go with a 10-year bond, then the interest rates are, are the, the amount of mortgage payment cannot be withheld by the board of said sales tax, and it will be about $820,000 short. So there's another $820,000 that has to come out of reserves every year. So, so I know that. There's also, as you pointed out, when you get a $25 million bond, you borrow money, you have to pay points. And you mentioned 100,000. I've heard from bond people that it might be closer to half a million to three million. But, you know. I, I would trust the people who are looking at my Okay, then I, I like the people you have better. It's, you know, less is, paying less is better. But, but then I think to myself, Opportunities for using money. Okay, so we've got 820,000, we've got 653,000 here. Well, if, if I can just stop just to correct the numbers that I know are wrong. Okay. So, so if we were to go with a 10 year issue versus a 20 year issue, which we are looking at because I think it's our okay. responsibility because of the $5 million savings that doing that would do, the clarity would be a little bit better clarity in terms of reading the tea leaves over 10 years and 20 years. Um, the um, additional funding that would need to come to pick that would not be covered by a quarter cent sales tax would be about $770,000. That is the additional money that we would need to pull out of the CIP to make up for what the quarter cent sales tax does not cover. So the quarter cent sales tax will, will absolutely cover a 20 year bond. Right. A quarter cent sales tax will not cover a 10 year bond. But instead of increasing the sales tax so that it does, in light of the fact that we've knocked all of these projects out, we believe that the funding is available where we would not sacrifice any of our additional uh, obligations to our to our CIP program. We would have the $770,000 to pay for the 10 years so that we could have that building paid off in 10 years and we would save $5 million in the cost of the interest. The, the other number that you quoted the first time is 600. I, I, I don't know what that number is, so I can't speak well, to well, that. Oh, I thought that was the one you talked about on the screen. Oh, the, the subsidy of what it would cost? Yeah, yeah that, that, is, that is what the, that's just, the, that's the subsidy. We, we subsidize everything, so that's, you are correct. We will, we, we subsidize police, we subsidize fire, we subsidize park for rent, park and rent. We subsidize almost everything that we, that we do. Every level of government does. I mean, we don't, once again, if there's a profit motive, 
somebody would have taken advantage of it. So, yes, we will have to spend taxpayer dollars because the rec recreation <coughs> will not pay for itself, if, if I understand your question. Correctly. Yes, that, that's correct. And, and the point I was getting to is that in the end, we're talking about maybe two, three million dollars a year that wouldn't have to come out of reserves if we didn't build it. And then what are the other opportunities for that two to three million for 5,100 households? So that's that's just something that, and I don't think there's any rumors there. <coughs> and rumors, it's just, there's other opportunities. There's, uh, as you said, maybe we can't go to Sylvester Powell, but maybe there's some other opportunities. Uh, as an alternative to recreation. Well, here, uh, I guess I'm not quite well, sure. I, I don't know whether it's here or somewhere else. I'm just saying that it's a lot of money, and it's not just a quarter cent. It's it's a lot of money that's coming out of out of our our treasury, out of our savings, out of our bank that could be used for a lot of different things. Well, well if we if we do, if I understand your statement of question, if we if we do nothing and we just maintain course, we're spending seven hundred twenty thousand dollars a year with what we currently have. To bring it up to standards so that it is inclusive and ADA accessible, if we bring it up to standards to where we actually bring it up to code compliance, if we bring it up to standards for safety, life safety issues, and replace old and aging uh, systems that are in these buildings and don't change anything, we're still looking at an investment somewhere between five and ten million dollars, and you don't and you don't see it. It's all on the walls. It's a new pool basin. It's a new filter uh, system underneath at the pool. It's new systems so that, you know, when it's 60 degrees outside, it's not 80 degrees in this room and 40 degrees in this room, and we can't figure out why it's not 60 degrees in either one of those rooms. So, so we're still going to incur costs to, to, do, to do nothing. So I, I, I guess I'm, there, I don't know that there's a less, ex, a, 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 a cheaper option. Well. There's the assumption that you will keep this facility or some recreational facilities. The alternative is to take the money that you would be spending and give every household $400. I just don't think that's like a reasonable thing to, reasonable thing to assume. I feel like the extra money you're assuming is sitting there to leverage would be used to operate this facility as it is or the aquatic center as it is with any essential upgrade. So I'm a little bit, I don't think it's right to just assume we have money to give out to households. I don't know if that's the right way to be talking about it either. Well, if we don't pass the sales tax, the, the money doesn't exist. So, so if, 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 if we don't pass the sales tax, whether that was a good idea or, or not a good idea, or good policy or bad policy, the money doesn't exist in the first place. Um, so, so it's not really there. But your suggestion of doing away with recreation so that we would have a, the funding that we're currently paying for recreation, I mean, is that, is that I'm just so I understand. Well, I, I'm just saying, proposal. give people the money and let them decide to buy their own recreation. Where is it in? It's a possibility. Okay. So send them to other cities? To in other cities, if they choose. And we're talking about 25% of the population. Right. Now, now, now 25% of the population now. But you have to assume that the city ages out and younger families are going to stay here and move here. And you have to have something to attract them to want to be here. Uh, let me address this from the council perspective. As mayor, I, I, I guess I wouldn't say I speak for the council, but we have had this discussion. Uh, and so I know pretty much how the council feels about this. And, and uh, it's come up before, uh, well, why don't we just do away with this one? We don't need to swim pool. You know, we'll sort of go swim somewhere else. Um, Kansas City, Kansas, for years had one swimming pool in the entire city of Kansas City, Kansas, which at the time was the third largest city in Kansas. Guess where a lot of those folks came you know, to go swim? They came to our pool. Um, we've done a survey and we've asked people about the value of having recreation. Is it something they want to see remain? Do they want to see it? Uh, kept at the same pace, it is not that they want to see it improved. We've already asked that. We've done statistically valid surveys. Uh, so we already know the answer. We already know uh, as, as much as we could know 
about what our residents feel about this. Doing away with recreation was not something they were interested in. And that's not something we're interested in. That's why it's not being discussed. We're not interested in it. We're not going to admit that. That's not going to happen. That's one of the values of being the council. You get to make decisions like this. But we don't make them just because we want to. We get this information from our residents. And so that's the course that we're taking. That's why we haven't gone on that road. Certainly, we could do away with these things. Uh, but that's not what anybody wants. At least not anybody to talk to, other than maybe yourself. And I don't really know. I'm not saying that you're saying that. You're just saying, is it an option that we've discussed? Yes, we have. We're not interested in it. Now, that being said, we've got to do something with what we've got. We either got to replace it with something new or we've got to fix what we have. And that's what we're trying to figure out. But what's the best? I mean, where, what's the best use for the money? Uh, I'll make a comment about the historic value of this building. I, I'll tell you, uh, nobody was a uh, stronger champion for keeping this building intact. Because I, I agree that history is important. Uh, and I still like, I mean, I still wish we could, could, could just simply make some changes here and move forward. But the more we found out about what we have here, uh, and the fact that we are in a floodplain, uh, it just became harder and harder for, for me to hold on to that drain. Uh, talk a little bit about the possibility of allowing a church or school to come in here. I can't imagine any entity, especially any entity that's nonprofit, how they could afford to come in this building and survive. But we're far from nonprofit. The city of Marion makes a profit, and we can barely afford it. We're sinking, we've sent thousands, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in this building just to keep it from leaking. And, and we are, it's just like one of those things you're never going to you're never gonna, you're never gonna get ahead. And that's our problem. Uh, I wish the place was in better shape. I was here, I worked for the city when we bought this building. I was part of that process uh, as an employee. I used to come in here and see all the water in the basement back then. Uh, and Irene French, when, when she was mayor, she had a great vision for a community center here. And we named it after her. Um, we had uh, no community center before, and then we have a community center. I think that was something that we, I'm not going to call it an entitlement, but I think it's something that people expect us to continue. Uh, and uh, I just think we, it's incumbent upon us to make what we have better in some fashion, whether it's here or whether it's in another location. And then, when we get to that decision, it's like, okay, we're going to spend money. Where, where is the money better spent? And, and uh, you know, we've had a lot of conversations on that. And that's, that's really what the vote's going to be. You're going to need to decide that. Everyone who's a registered voter, who that is. And everyone who lives in the city of Marion as a registered voter is going to get that option. Uh, and that's where we're headed. We, we want to make sure that, you know, we're trying to be transparent and open. We're getting great questions here. This is why we're here. Uh, we all want to hear what your questions are. If you have more, we'll go for it. But talking, I think you raised your hand. I wanted to echo something that the dear lady at the last seat said. Uh, and as I said before, uh, since I've been here about 15 years, I've just noticed a lot of marrying and putting a lot of time and effort to bring the businesses in. And I would welcome the fact that they would spend at least that much time trying to do things that would bring families in. Uh, I have a young couple behind me that just had their first child, and I just you know, some people about three houses down from me that have two or three children. And uh, the young families need to have something to attract them and something to want to take their family to. Uh, I guess one other thing, too, and I don't know that the, the Chris would make this sound. <laughs> I forgot, sorry. Uh, we talked about the money. Uh, where's the money going to come from? Uh, I'll give you a couple of other examples of things that we have to look forward to ahead. Uh, the courthouse project uh, was passed. Uh, the city of Marion gets a portion of the funding, the tax funding from that. All the cities do. Our portion of the tax funding we're going to get is 300000 a year. So out of the money that you're trying to find uh, where it could come from, 300000 of it we're getting uh, starting in the, in the years to come, next couple of years that we weren't even counting on. That's 300,000. Uh, we, we have a lot of car dealerships, and everybody knows that. And uh, we're very fortunate. That's one of the reasons why we're not high We didn't go out and encourage car dealerships to come here. We didn't encourage IKEA to come here. I don't know the history. They came to us and said, we're going to put an IKEA there on this 
parking lot. Now, I wish I could say, hey, I'm the one that brought IT in here, but that's just simply not true. They selected Marion to come here. The car dealerships selected Marion to come here because it's a great place for the car dealership. We make a lot of money off the car dealerships. And we didn't beg them to come here. Um, we have retail areas that have, and all these areas have been redeveloped from other business areas. So uh, the one car dealership, of course, Cindy, hopefully she had some, put her fingers in her ears or something, but uh, anywhere from 500 to 700,000 a year to be collected from a, from a, a, a decent uh, car dealership. We have several of them, and we're expecting the possibility of one, possibly two more in the future. So I don't know that the council's too much worried about where the money's coming from. We see where the money's coming from. And we have the luxury of knowing the day-to-day -day financial circumstances of the city. We thought that this, this plan, either way we go with something to the bankrupt, we wouldn't be here. Yeah. And I know there's a question of you know, credibility to the opportunity, and they talked about putting a community center in their city, and they passed on it. Why shouldn't we do the same? Well, I would tell you, why don't you compare our financial situation with Prairie Village? How many car dealerships do they have in Prairie Village? How many ideas do they have in Prairie Village? The answer is none. So we're not the same kind of city. There are circumstances. Prairie Village is a great place to live. But if you put a community center in Prairie Village, guess who's going to pay for it? 100% of them. The people who live there, the taxpayers, and they're going to pay it through their property taxes. We're not even talking about paying this with property taxes. Completely different situation. Uh, I mean, we're very fortunate to, again, have the opportunity to be able to talk about this. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> well, my two cents. We've lived in Marion for 59 years. Our sons went to school here. So we appreciate this building, but my husband has worked on it, and he can tell you how bad the pipes We don't have any CIDs in this community. 
Our city sales tax rate is what it is. There's only about two or three other communities in Johnson County that have no CIDs that actually have a commercial sector. Mission Hills, uh, Lake Premier, they don't count because they're just, uh, they don't have commercial areas. But uh, yeah, we would still remain very, very competitive. And, and once again, I, there's a whole presentation on that on that website right there. In the field new option, what uh, what does the city stand to say by combining infrastructure and staffing that we currently duplicate by having two sites? The, the question is, is if we were to combine the two sites, what kind of efficiencies would we gain? Yeah, separate from talking about the preparing dilapidated conditions or floodplains, just sure. if, if there were two new facilities based to our, you know, compared to one facility. Well, the biggest thing would be the staffing. You know, the, one of the biggest things that we pay for uh, in any business page for is personnel. You know, you're paying wages, you're paying benefits, you know, whatever you pay uh, an employee per hour, you can almost tag an extra 30% on just in benefits. So the fact that we would be able to have controlled access, shared locker rooms, shared uh, meeting space between, you know, if you wanted to have a pool party during the summer out here, pool party in the summer over here, we would have, we would, we would have economies of scale that we would be able to achieve, not just in the building itself, because you have shared space, and, you know, so they have a locker room, a locker room. Uh, you would have personnel costs because you have one point of entry. Everybody comes in, you're in here. You want to go to the outdoor pool, you come in, go here. If you want to go and use the inside amenities, you go here. That's one person. I don't have to have a person sitting at the desk here and a person sitting at the desk there. So there's, there's efficiencies absolutely to be gained uh, in terms of both personnel and um, the building themselves. But it's going to be personnel over the long haul where we're going to see your big city.
regardless what we spend it, right? it doesn't matter what we spend it. If we do a quarter cent sales tax increase, the, the increase, it would, it would make us an extra $2 million. The city's residence portion would be $360,000 over $2 million. And, and that has, that really has nothing to do with the community. Of course, it's so bad. It's Absolutely. 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 Yeah, I, I don't know. So th that chart there isn't where all this is just an example of how we compare. That's not necessarily the performer. Now this is just the executive summary. So but that's what we have. That's what you guys are presenting for us to look at. Right. The community that we're going to be voting on. Great point. Great point. Just 
what we're put out there. That doesn't mean that we can't start adjusting and maybe make changes to the non-resident numbers to definitely keep the resident numbers uh, at a, as low as we possibly can. Right. Well, and the cost of things do increase. I mean, at, over time, we know that to say in five years from now, your membership will still be $110. I can't say that. Our salary, the, our salaries increase, our expenses increase. You know, we can't buy toilet paper and janitorial supplies for the same price every year. So we've got to look at that balance someplace, unfortunately.